Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our tonight's discussion round about investment climate in Ukraine. When we were setting the date for this discussion, we, we were not quite sure how far the teams, the football teams of the two involved countries, Ukraine and Switzerland, would be. But of course, we're very happy that both have qualified. And we are even more happy that they don't play tonight, but they play uh, tomorrow. So this would have been a tough uh, competition anyway. I'm very happy that we uh, can welcome tonight the ambassador of Ukraine to Switzerland, Dr. Ribchenko Artem. He uh, has been here to Switzerland as the ambassador of Ukraine uh, since 2018. Um, the older I get, the more impressed I am how young people are if they, when they come into very you know, important positions. So uh, our ambassador tonight was born in 80, 1983 uh, and um, is, is, has been ambassador for quite some time already here in Switzerland. So congratulations to this uh, wonderful uh, success, Mr. Ambassador. You um, have studied uh, international relations at the National uh, University in Kiev, where you received a bachelor and also a master, and I believe also your uh, doctoral thesis uh, you received from the same uh, university. You have a master uh, uh, in, in, in international public law. You are also a lawyer uh, by training, and you are a specialist in intellectual property law. In addition to all that, you have studied uh, a, a year at the um, Friedrich Schiller University in Jena in Germany, and that's also why you speak, of course, German uh, uh, perfectly. Now, as I said, since 2018, you have been ambassador here in Switzerland. Before that, you have been working uh, three years as a counselor at the embassy in Austria, the Ukraine embassy in Austria. Before that, you worked for the Ukraine uh, president in uh, Kiev. You were also head of the Department for International Legal Cooperation, and you were also head of the section uh, for uh, uh, drug control in the Ukraine. You have, you're married, you have two daughters, and you're going to talk tonight about investment climate to Ukraine. We all know that Ukraine is, is in a quite difficult position in, at the eastern uh, border, uh, but um, we are interested to learn how is, is the rest of Ukraine uh, being interesting for uh, Swiss firms and companies, for example, to invest there. So, Mr. Ambassador, the floor is yours, and please uh, welcome once again. Thank you very much, dear Professor Berhals. It's my big pleasure to be today uh, on the platform of Europa Institute. Unfortunately, we still miss our personal meetings. I'm sure next time it will be an offline uh, event. And uh, I wish everyone to stay healthy so we can come closer to this point as soon as possible. Uh, of course, it's a great opportunity to start first day of the second half of the year uh, talking about Ukraine on such respectful uh, audience. And uh, of course, uh, I would like to start uh, saying about Ukraine that this year, it's a very special year for us because it's uh, 30 years of our independence. And of course, it's a big focus uh, talking about our uh, foreign policy and cooperation with our international partners. And uh, Switzerland is uh, one of the most important partners, especially we remember 2014, uh, as the war has started, it was a big support from Switzerland as um, your country was uh, heading the OC mission in Vienna and uh, a lot of important things have been issued and uh, of course we have received very high quality results. But today we will talk about investment, which is also very important. Uh, as I mentioned, we are a young country, a lot of reforms are on the way. Uh, we have a lot of programs uh, also with our international partners. And uh, I will try to focus on the main parts talking about uh, our uh, international economical and business cooperation. So uh, Ukraine.30, this is a big project uh, of our president. 
Uh, especially for this year, we hold 30 different forums uh, back in our capital for our international partners to present different spheres of life, 30 different spheres of life. And of course, a big focus is on uh, business. Uh, reforms is something very important, but at the same time, it takes uh, some challenges and uh, uh, we're facing them. Uh, that's why sometimes we uh, have to take a bit longer steps uh, to reach them as soon as possible. Reform conference is one of such, uh, Ukraine reform conference, this is one of the platforms where we present uh, our changes. Uh, it's a very in interesting institution which takes place every year in new country. The first one was in London, the second one was in Copenhagen, third one took place in uh, Toronto. Also, uh, we had uh, postponed, unfortunately, last year, our fourth conference in Vilnius, which will take place next week. Uh, I'm, I will be happy to be there as uh, our big friend uh, and uh, big colleague, uh, Mr. Kasis, will join the conference uh, with bilateral meetings with the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, with our prime minister, uh, Mr. Schmigal, and of course with uh, my minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Kuleba. And the main reason, because the next, the fifth conference will take place here in Switzerland. It's in Lugana next July. So I think this will be a big focus also in economy and post-COVID process. And this is a great platform to present what has been done and what are the aims for, for the next year. Uh, talking about investment, uh, a lot has been changed in several years. Uh, first of all, and I think one of the most important things that Ukraine has transformed fully towards European markets, towards uh, West. Of course, it's not just the bill, it's the uh, also some homework to be done. We had to change and we're still in the process of uh, standards. So we, we come back from, uh, say, post-Soviet standards, uh, East standards to pro-European, best standards. Uh, it takes time and resource, but uh, now we know that a lot of uh, goods are delivered with the, uh, with the European quality uh, to Europe and to other countries. Uh, just to mention that it's a two-way road and the bridge uh, goes both ways. Switzerland is a number four uh, main investor to our economy. We have a lot of projects going on and new ones to come, which we already know about. Uh, our president supports on the highest level uh, all investors. Uh, we have since a few months, a new law uh, of supporting uh, our big investors. Uh, it's called the uh, babysitter uh, for investors law because a, a big investor receives a special envoy, a special person covering all the issues, all the challenges, and uh, this is a big protection and big support. Talking about business credibility, our parliament also has created uh, since one year a special co coordination group uh, for protecting the law and, uh, and, the, and the rights of, uh, of investors, of foreign investors. And as uh, our government is uh, a big focus uh, in our political system, and we have the parliamentary presidential system, uh, government plays a huge role and the uh, uh, additional institutions were created like uh, Ukraine Invest, where you can really enter the right doors uh, to find the support, also uh, promotion Ukraine. I would suggest to uh, our colleagues to find the website, which is very simple to find. It's called ukraine.ua. And it's especially for our international friends and partners. Uh, talking about main spheres of our economy, uh, I would say we're well known for uh, grains and brains. Grains, it's an agro food 
sector and brains it's for uh, digital for IT sector uh, let's say about digital few words a new ministry was created uh, with uh, with a new government with uh, President Zelensky initiative which is called a uh, uh, country in the smartphone we have reached very high results and the delegation from SDC was in Kyiv just uh, three weeks ago and uh, I was happy and proud to see the presentations and how our Swiss partners were positively surprised about the achievements and uh, I would like to underline that we get the really support from from our Swiss partners uh, in this sphere. Uh, we have a huge number of IT specialists. Uh, we do some outsource. Uh, we participate in the worldwide known uh, IT programs. Uh, some well known, even uh, far away from Ukraine. And of course, uh, the leader, the, the main person uh, for this case would be the Vice Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Fedorov, who is also heading a Swiss-Ukrainian Economical Commission. This is an institution that gathers every two years. It's an official uh, state institution, a platform, you can say. Uh, actually, the next meeting will take place in Kyiv. Uh, later December this year. Unfortunately, it was postponed from June because of still um, COVID situation. So uh, this is uh, uh, a platform where we talk on official level and it is always followed by the business forum. So uh, you are more than welcome. Please let uh, us know, let the embassy know if you're interested to be a part of this business delegation coming from Switzerland. And uh, last uh, two years ago, uh, Zurich, uh, together with GCC Zurich, we had a very good forum and very good discussions and B2B meetings. I think this is very important instrument uh, talking about investment. Another good institution, uh, which is quite young, it's just a year old, a bit more, uh, which is called Ukrainian Swiss Business Association with, uh, with the headquarters in St. Gallen, but of course we cover the whole Switzerland. And this is a direct bilateral institution platform where we can really give the support for uh, newcomers who are interested in in Ukraine market, the huge market, I have to mention, Ukraine is the biggest by territory, the largest country in Europe. Uh, actually, it is uh, over 600,000 square kilometers, and it's 5.7% uh, of territory of the whole Europe, with a population of 40 million. Uh, unfortunately, in last years, a lot of Ukrainians have left uh, our country because of the Russian aggression. Uh, but coming back to the Donbas issue, uh, I have to admit it's, of course, a big resource-taking part of our life, uh, talking about lives, talking about financial issue, talking about time, which is most important for young countries. But at the same time, being in Kyiv, even Kharkiv, which is much closer than the, it is the first capital of Ukraine and, and the second largest uh, city in Ukraine, you don't really feel the threat of the war. Uh, I think the most uh, important part to, to mention that uh, the war takes away lives, but doesn't take away the will of our people to make our country very European, very strong, and uh, and to have this business credibility, which is very important, uh, building and doing business. In this case, we also would like to mention that uh, Ukraine is a big country, and uh, traditionally it's an agro country. Uh, we have a new law uh, on on land, uh, so it's uh, now regulated more uh, frankly and more transparent. Uh, 
Uh, in other few spheres, it's a possibility uh, of huge production lines and uh, manufacturing. This is something very special about our country uh, in different spheres. Uh, innovate, innovation technologies, this is also uh, something special and uh, something interesting where we can find uh, points with our partners and uh, of course uh, natural resources this is uh, something what we can be happy about as where we have mountains we have lakes we have uh, uh, black sea and the azov the azov sea and of course uh, for uh, if you go to ukraine.ua you'll find the uh, uh, web about uh, why investing in Ukraine and there you can find four main points. Location, a strategic geographical location at the crossroads of Europe, Asia and the Middle East. We have a big hub for uh, air transport and uh, it is used very actively. Uh, human resources, talented human capital, it's 70% of Ukrainians have secondary or higher education, where we know a lot about uh, technical uh, education here in Switzerland, and we are looking forward to have some exchanges. And uh, last year uh, in Davos, uh, Madame President Sumoruga and President uh, Zelensky have discussed the possibility to build courses, and some of them already exist, for example, a huge a project by Gebrit, Swiss company uh, with uh, big plans uh, in Ukraine and also investments. Uh, I don't know if I may open all the details, but we have this very good cooperation for many years now. Uh, cost competitiveness, one of the most cost competitive locations in Europe to base your business. It is true because uh, Salary is not as high as uh, in European Union and uh, Switzerland and Ukraine, both not in EU countries for now. And uh, I know it's a big issue and uh, something is discussed very actively in Switzerland and uh, Ukraine is really trying to get the best from European institutions and programs also uh, in the business sphere and uh, of course, law easy of doing business okay simple legal procedures for business as well as stage guaranteed state guaranteed uh, investment security i have mentioned already the new law and of course the support of the parliament of course this is not the only instruments uh, which are used uh, we really uh, hope that um, this year will bring a uh, new focus on Ukraine and uh, not only uh, 30 years of independence, but also uh, talking about Swiss-Ukraine relations. We have built a very strong bridge, uh, I would say, on the political level. And uh, we highly appreciate and respect the support uh, of, uh, of official Baron uh, in, on international platforms like UN and UOC and uh, other institutions. And uh, I think this is a very great and in, very important background for uh, business. And uh, this year we will hold also political consultations with our Swiss uh, partners from uh, MFA, also in Kyiv. Uh, also, we expect to have a visit of uh, the Federal Council, His uh, Excellency Mr. Kassis to Kyiv later in October. Uh, and of course, for, for the Independence Day, a huge, or maybe not huge, but big delegation from, uh, from the Swiss Parliament is coming to Kyiv uh, in August. Uh, for our celebrations, for our bilateral meetings, and the uh, and the delegation is headed by uh, President Andreas Ebi. Uh, I have met him just two days ago, and I think we have a very good track. And we both sides are looking forward for this 
important political uh, for the chain of economical and business uh, meetings. So uh, I would maybe stop here uh, to be able to answer some questions or maybe I can go further, just let me know. This was the high update and uh, the latest news, but many, many ideas and thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador, for this great overview on the, on the investment climate in uh, Ukraine. Um, it was interesting for me to learn that Switzerland is the fourth biggest investor to Ukraine. That's, that, that's amazing. Uh, can, can you specify who exactly is investing? Is, is, is this pharma? Is this, is this uh, mechanical industry or, or all, all together? I would say it's all together. We will be surprised, but uh, also such spheres as natural or cultural pearls or stones. It takes about 52% of expert from Ukraine to Switzerland. Mm. But talking about Switzerland, uh, the mineral fuels, oil and products of processing is a 50% as well. But we understand it's not the natural ones, but we know that uh, Switzerland is a great uh, coordinator and uh, uh, we have also a big amount of um, not only products cooperation, but as well as the cooperation in uh, treatments, uh, bank, uh, let's say, a sphere, banking sphere. Also, we are proud about the insurance sphere and of course all the smart smart deals yeah okay. so it's it's a big mix but uh, we know that uh, it's stable it's been uh, for many years and uh, uh, the volume of trade in goods decreased unfortunately this year by 24 percent because of covid mm. uh, with amount of 1.3 billion us dollars uh, last year it was 1.7 billion US dollars and uh, the spheres are very different. So structure of Swiss investments in the economy of Ukraine, industries 59.9%, retail trade, repair, motor vehicles 23.2%, mm -hmm. activities in the field of administrative and support services 6.6%, Okay. Financial and insurance activities, 4.3%. Okay. Real estate transactions, 2.8%. Mm -hmm. Transport, warehousing, 1.8%. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. Now, we learned, for example, it was two weeks ago, right, that the Russians had 120,000 soldiers uh, put along the border of Ukraine. I mean, this is some, should that be of concern for investors that, that, that they have to, you know, be ready that the Russians are invading Ukraine more than what they have done so far? Or how do you deal with that from an investment point of view, that you have such a aggression potential on the other side of the border? Well, uh, from experience, when someone wants to really have uh, an annexation or... Uh, some kind of uh, escalation of the situation, usually it's been done quietly and fast. In this case, it was very media full support uh, just to show our country and our partners that we are still here, we are still near, but uh, I think uh, this is just so far uh, to show the muscles. Of course, we have a lot of discussions and uh, very active files with our international partners, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, our President of our country, Mr. Uh, Zelensky, was on the phone, over the phone, uh, with personal meetings with our partners, just to not to 
repeat uh, the 2013-14 situation. We don't see any uh, big uh, threats uh, so far, but we have to admit that the army of Ukraine 2013-14 and today it's two different stories. Now it's a really strong army uh, with a, a ground-based uh, uh, really ex experience and uh, we have very interesting and important uh, cooperation and trainings with our international partners. Uh, we have a very important support from the new administration uh, over, this, over the ocean, Biden's administration. As you know, that uh, the Ukrainian issue was discussed also in Geneva during the uh, summit. Uh, also, uh, our president uh, has uh, the visit of our president uh, Zelensky is planned to Washington already this month in July after the reform conference, uh, which is I think also important for for our strategy. And uh, of course, I think uh, the support and uh, and the vision of uh, Switzerland. Uh, as a country that really brings the uh, rule of law on the high level is also important. Mm -hmm. And this triangle, I would say, as an ambassador of Ukraine to Switzerland, triangle of uh, uh, Bern, uh, Washington and Kyiv is an interesting uh, part okay. of our foreign policy. Of course, you remember that Ukraine was also a hot issue during the presidential election campaign in in the US, we, we don't want to go into that, right? That was something very, very special. But I have, I have questions here coming from the audience. And the first question I'd like to pass to you is, could you please describe the tax situation in Ukraine? Probably also especially for foreigners or foreign companies who want to invest in Ukraine. Is this tax-wise favorable or, or not? It's a big discussion on the parliament. Uh, in the Ukrainian parliament, uh, because there are, I would say, two groups uh, of uh, minders. Uh, first, we really understand that the uh, lower tax is a big door opener for a new investment to come. At the same time, uh, the tax is important for us, uh, in, once again, for, for our source uh, for for support of uh, east part of our country, but nevertheless uh, we have special programs and also the new law I have mentioned before uh, the so-called uh, babysitter uh, investor the nanny investor, which was actually presented also in Davos uh, 2020, just before the pandemic has started. It was just perfectly in time made. I think these are very good uh, regulations, and um, especially for a big investor. So the bigger investment, the the low, the more possibilities and uh, interesting tools are used. Mm -hmm. Of course, we support every investor, not only the big ones. Uh, it's just, uh, for example. A huge project of our president about uh, which is called the uh, big construction. Now we're building huge amount and kilometers of roads, uh, kindergartens, schools. Uh, so the infrastructure sector today is in a big focus mm -hmm. of uh, of our reforms. Would you say that from an international level, the, the, the high of, of, the, of taxation in Ukraine is, is in a way average or is it above a little bit average because you need such, so much investment? No, no, I think I would say we, we have a normal European standard way. Okay. So it's, it's not something special, unusual. Okay. It's, it's absolutely normal and as I said, if we have four, I mean, number four, uh, Switzerland is a inv direct investor. So I think this is uh, the best uh, answer to this question. <laughs> very good. Another concern for investors is, is very often also the level of corruption in a, in a country. And 
and we know that corruption is, is, is an issue also in, in Ukraine. Could you a little bit talk to us about how, how, how this works, how much, how successful you have been in, in also fighting corruption, maybe especially also at courts, very important if, if investors want to turn to court to, you know, to enforce their agreements. Uh, how, how does it work today in Ukraine? Very good and pointed question. We know the problem. Uh, this is a challenge for our country. It comes from the 90s. Uh, as Ukraine became independent, uh, it was a hard time for our country. And unfortunately, corruption is one of the bad tools which was brought from abroad. But nevertheless, in last seven, eight years, just after the revolution of dignity. We have approximately five new institutions created, which is focusing only on corruption. For example, the National Anti-Corruption Bureau, the Special uh, Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office. The last one, uh, this is the uh, Special Anti-Corruption Court. So we have a chain of institutions focused only on anti-corruption issues. Uh, this is also about cooperation uh, and project, international projects with our international partners. Also, Switzerland plays a big role. Uh, during the first ever state visit of your president, Madame President Zomaruga, last year to Ukraine in July, uh, a new memorandum was signed between the Basel Institution uh, for, uh, for the anti-corruption issues with our National Anti-Corruption Bureau, uh, which is uh, a, a very interesting platform for, the, for, the, for this possibility of cooperation and bring the best courses uh, for our people fighting the corruption. This is a big issue of our president, of our government, with, uh, for all, uh, our uh, staff and teams who really focus uh, of, uh, on the anti-corruption issues. A lot of new programs and regulations are there. For example, Ukraine has the probably strongest control on, uh, on all state uh, workers. Uh, we have to go for online declaration and if you uh, if you buy or sell something more than I would say, it's like three thousand now uh, dollars. You have to put it on line declaration. So and it's not only for the institutions. Any Ukrainian can go online and find uh, information how uh, much you own, uh, how many cars you have. Uh, of course, you block the addre address and you block the, the all the personal data, but but the, the the whole amount you can understand. So this is a big big fight. And so, uh, if, if an investor comes to Ukraine and you know he needs a permit from some government uh, agency, is there still a risk that that he he's asked to 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 pay something? No, no, no. Table. And how this to react is, in such a situation? What no, do you do? First of all, this is not the case. Uh, I have mentioned the new uh, Minister of Digital Transformation and this huge project uh, about, uh, it's called DIA. Uh, so it's, a, it's an online platform where actually Ukraine is the first country that allows uh, your passport and all the IDs uh, to have online so you don't need it on the paper way. And also, this is the same about opening business. So maybe in 10 minutes, you can open business online. So now it's a sub, I mean, it, it has changed so much since a few years. And uh, there are so many new instruments to open business and to support business. And of course, uh, once again, it's a big and huge focus of of our president, of our parliament, of our government. So we have all the tools near you. And of course, here in Switzerland, you can always turn to the embassy. Our doors are always open for our friends and partners. 
Also, I have mentioned the U Ukraine Swiss Business Association. Actually, tomorrow uh, we have uh, uh, some kind of gathering of our uh, colleagues uh, at the embassy in Bern. Uh, so maybe someone still can uh, catch up at three o'clock at the embassy. Please, more than welcome. You will be presented uh, to our president of, of the association. And after and, that, uh, we are all watching the football game, right? After the football game, right? <laughs> but we have planned in advance. You know, it's <laughs> we're trying to go the Swiss way and plan everything in advance. <laughs> If I'm right, there is also a free trade agreement between Switzerland and Ukraine in the framework of EFTA, right? Are you yes. satisfied with that agreement or is there anything on your wish list that, that is, for example, visa, person, you know, free travel of persons. How easy is it to, to get visas for Swiss to go to Ukraine or the other way around, Ukrainians to come to, to uh, Switzerland? Thank you. Uh, first, well, about the visas, uh, it's a free visa regime for Swiss people to come to Ukraine as well as for Ukrainians to come to Switzerland. <clears throat> Only because of pandemic, uh, now it's a bit harder, but still for Ukrainians to come to Switzerland. Uh, but uh, we, for business, we always find solutions. And uh, for, for that case, we are always in a great cooperation with, with the Swiss Embassy in Kiev, with my dear colleague, Ambassador Claude Wild, who is doing a very good and great job uh, posting uh, in my capital. We are uh, very often uh, in touch on different uh, uh, business cases as well. Uh, so the visa is not an issue, and hopefully after the vaccination, uh, period will be back to normal, so no visas are needed for both mm -hmm. sides. You just buy the ticket and get in the plane. Once again, before pandemic, we had two planes a day from Zurich and another mm -hmm. one per day from Geneva. So Ukraine is just around the corner, which takes two and a half hours to get to to our capital or to other and big cities. What what about working working permits? Is this also easily to to get? Or uh, yes, for sure you need a permit, a working permit, but uh, it's not a big case. And uh, once again, here we can suggest uh, the right people uh, in Ukraine who can help and assist. So it's the twenty first century. Everything is online and everything is fast. So. No problem at all. Talking about the uh, free taxation zone, uh, frankly speaking, I, as an ambassador, would like to have it more, to use this instrument more actively, uh, to have more projects and to have more cooperation using this tool. And uh, I think this is also something to be discussed during the 13th meeting of the Swiss-Ukrainian Economical Commission that I have already uh, mentioned. Uh, actually, I haven't mentioned that uh, Ambassador um, Bollinger from SECO is the co-chair from the Swiss side. And once again, the Vice Prime Minister Federer from the Ukrainian side, and I'm the, the deputy uh, co-chair from the Ukrainian side. So I will be aware of all issues, and I think this will be something to discuss. And just to finish the issue of the commission, uh, that also we now uh, hope that uh, Ukraine will be back on the SIPO program, which is about investment and expert uh, coordination uh, together with Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So this is another, I would say, platform where can we really build bridges. But there is no preferable position for Ukrainians who want to come to Switzerland, right? You, you, you would be under the third country regime and, and in a way force Ukrainians to come to Switzerland to get a work permit. It's much more difficult, that's correct? I would say I know a lot of Ukrainians doing business, their own business in Switzerland or uh, being hired by Swiss companies uh, of course, we talk about very uh, niche uh, issues. It's not uh, like uh, every second company has a Ukrainian board, but uh, if you talk about uh, IT especially, if you talk about engineering, 
if you talk about people uh, from agro sector who really knows uh, mm. the the sector the 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 world of uh, professional world they're very much uh, highly invited to Switzerland and other European countries mm. and uh, once again we have really smart people mm -hmm. hard working people and uh, a lot of uh, most of uh, mm -hmm. Companies I know from worldwide uh, who hire Ukrainians, they're very much satisfied and then they don't let them go. So this is... A, a, a complete different question. Would the opening of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline have negative impacts on the economy of Ukraine? Everything will... Well, first of all, it's uh, from our point of view and from the point of many of our partners. It's not an economical, it's a political project. Of course, the aim of one of the countries of this project uh, to weaken our economy, to weaken our pipeline system. Uh, but everything will depend on how far they go and uh, what will be the last call for, for our pipeline. So, of course, this is something that diplomatically we are fighting against for. Uh, and I would like to underline that Ukraine method is only political, diplomatical way to keep the position, not the militarization, uh, never, as far as not going about uh, defending our country and our territory. But coming back to the Nord Stream 2, uh, we understand that we might face some challenges, but uh, we are on the on the very deep negotiations with with our international partners. Okay, okay. There's another question coming in from the audience. Um, do you think that the Black Iron uh, uh, ore project will uh, go forward under this precedent? The uh, iron ore, uh, obviously, is Eisenerz, right? Do we know that project? Is this... Yes, this is, uh, I was mentioning natural resources, so this is something about this. And uh, uh, if I have correctly understand the question, uh, this issue is important for Ukraine because especially before the east part of Ukraine uh, was very strong for for for, for this product. Uh, now, uh, so-called temporary occupied territories of of east part uh, suffer from losing uh, this resource uh, and infrastructure because it's not uh, supported the right way, uh, the the way how it has to be treated technically. So. Uh, We'll see how it goes, but for, for our president, uh, anything what is about Ukraine and anything what is about natural resources of our country, it's in a big issue. I would like to also mention a very new uh, presented uh, project, which is called Ukraine Green, uh, Ukraine, Green Ukraine, or Green Country, sorry, Green Country. So uh, the aim is to built a forest recovery uh, project and uh, i've been also here in switzerland in touch with uh, with, pro with colleagues about swiss experience uh, in this uh, very important for for climate uh, change uh, instrument and uh, hopefully we will find also cooperation with switzerland in the forest recovery uh, program mm -hmm. Another question from the audience. What about trading across Ukrainian borders? Your country has an ideal location. Is importing and exporting easy? Absolutely. For example, with Europe, we have a free trade regime as well, with the European Union, I mean, which is very actively been used for now six years, I think, maybe five. And of course, as I have mentioned, that uh, most of our companies turned best. So the quality, the standards, the, even how the product is, looks like 
from outside the package i would say it's it's everything is european standard so crossing the border it's no no not an issue if we talk about west talking about east of course it's now very limited i would say or even not possible but uh, i would say that uh, if it's far away countries uh, far east or middle east uh, kiev hub or kharkiv hub is a, a great location for 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 big companies to 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 transfer by air so mm -hmm. no problem no problem at all as you know mr mr ambassador uh, our institute has very good relations to universities in Ukraine, and we, we enjoy this cooperation very much, specifically with uh, Odessa, which is a, a beautiful, one of the, my, my favorite city in, in the south of Ukraine. And we also do excursion, offering excursion from time to time to Ukraine. And last time we went uh, very near Odessa to a place, a vineyard, and this vineyard was founded by Swiss in 1815, called by the Russian Tsar in those days to cultivate the, the Black Sea area uh, after the, 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 the territory was acquired by, by Russia. It's a beautiful place. They even played Swiss songs on that, in that uh, little museum. But my question is, is language an issue when you go to Ukraine? Uh, can you get around with speaking English or, or, or German, or, or do you need to speak Ukrainian? No, of course. Uh... In the last 10 years, Ukraine has changed a lot. A lot of young people uh, who studied English in schools and universities, now it's not a, a problem. I mean, it can happen, but I would say such cities as Kyiv, Odessa, Kharkiv, big cities, it's not a no issue at all. Talking about English, German maybe less, of course, but talking about international uh, international point of view, Ukraine is a very international uh, country, very modern country, very young country with young people. The revolution of dignity has changed, of course, a lot. And uh, that's why uh, young people actually were the, the main flag of the, of, of, of the, of the 2013, 2014 because they want to become Europeans, because they want their children to live in Europe with European quality of life and uh, with uh, really European uh, sense of understanding the world, the rules, uh, the true game, if we talk about business. And uh, of course, this is aim of every ambassador to, to really be as much possible transparent and to bring and to provide and to promote uh, our country. But it's a, a true story. Mm. And uh, so the, coming back to the language issue, we have hosted huge European events like uh, Euro 2012 football championship together with Poland. We have hosted Eurovision uh, contest uh, finals twice. We have uh, we have hosted the finals uh, of the European uh, football championship three years ago now. So we're very European thinking and uh, trying to be also a big part of European family. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. You do a wonderful job, Mr. Ambassador in uh, representing Ukraine uh, here, here in Switzerland. My big pleasure. You, you, you. You, you know, in the past, we had had the privilege to have two acting uh, presidents of Ukraine coming to our institute and giving a lecture at the uh, Zurich University. And of course, we very much hope we can continue this young tradition, right? And uh, maybe have uh, welcoming another president uh, in Zurich, always more than welcome. Thank you so much for this uh, excellent presentation, for the very interesting uh, discuss, discussions, and we are looking forward to continuing and improving our relations between Ukraine and Switzerland, and both of us looking very much forward for tomorrow evening.
that um and the day after tomorrow as well <laughs> very well <laughs> thank you very much all the very best mr ambassador thank, thank you, you so much. much my big okay. pleasure thank you i really hope that uh, the next meeting will be in person live with other colleagues very much looking forward to continuing our cooperation with your great institution we have already planned something for for the fall and uh, we'll keep the track on that and of course uh, the visit of our president will stay uh, on the top of my working page thank you so much mr ambassador thank you and good night thank, thank you. you very much all the best thank you so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for being present tonight um, with the uh, ambassador from ukraine um, we hope to see you again when we are either on air or live here in zurich i wish you a good evening good night